All right, I'm going to introduce Greg O'Kane. Take it away. Okay, yeah, Ross phoned me this morning. Yeah, well, 10 or 11 o'clock, he said, I need somebody to do roasted restoration. So I'm going to give it a shot to you guys. What I'm going to be talking about is our uh, 1972 BMW R60-5 with a sidecar on it. Now, as many of you have seen it. Uh, lead, lead up to the story, when my wife Marie was 50, she decided to take the motorcycle course and get her driver's license. She was tired of sitting on the back. And I don't think Rick taught her, but you must have been around at the time when, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when, when she took the course. Anyway, she took the course and uh, finished it in, I think it was like in June, and bought a 400 Yamaha, and she rode it to Lillooet, B.C., <laughs> to a rally. <laughs> yeah, little 400 Yamaha. So anyway, we got home, and she decided she wanted something bigger, of course. She wanted a bigger bike. I, at the time, I was riding an R100-7, so she, she got sensible and she decided she wanted a BMW. <laughs> and they were hard to find. At the time, I was working at Headingley at the jail, and there was a guy in the powerhouse called Jim Simmons, one of the original uh, members of the Antique Motorcycle Club, Jim Simmons. And uh, I mentioned it to Jim. He had an R60-2 with a sidecar on it before that, but he had sold it at the time. Anyway, he says, he says I think I know a guy has a little BMW that he, he might sell, he might not, but we can give him a shot. So he got me the phone number of a man called Jim Gold, who was also... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Early <coughs> yeah. Pardon? First year, second year, something yeah, like that. Yeah, he was in the, at the club at the time, or beginning to. Anyway, we phoned up Jim, talked to him, and uh, he said, yeah, well, I said, can we come have a look at it? And he said, yeah. He had it in a little storage she had over off... Um, Saskatchewan Avenue, one of those storage containers. Marie and I drove over there one Sunday afternoon and he opened up the door of the storage container and he was into collecting model railroads at the time as well. So we had these big plastic bins full of little uh, railroad stuff and that. So we took some of them out and the next thing he, he wheeled out a Tiger 110 that was absolutely immaculate covered with a white sheet. He took the sheet off. It had the number plate on the front fender and everything. And he right away he says to me, he says, don't even look at it. It's not for sale. I said, okay, that's not what we're here for. Then at the back he had this BMW. Same thing, all covered over with sheets. Anyway, we rolled it out, looked at it. Um, he says, uh, I said to him, so will you consider selling it? And he said, well, you know, I'm not really too fussy about selling it or not. He kept it for a while. I have some pictures here of it when, when we bought it. I'll just pass them around. Anyway, Marie started talking to him and uh, trying to get him talked into selling it. And he gave us a price for it. And as soon as he said the price, the first thing, Marie kicked me in the shin. And I looked at her and she said, don't dick her with him. <laughs> we not dick her. So we decided, we paid him what he asked for it. Decided to, we'd buy the bike. We were going to pick it up the following week. We went there to get it. And uh, he had all the bags off it, he had the fairing off it, all wrapped up. He had a bunch of uh, stuff, he gave me a list of all the, all the parts that he had, extra parts that he had from it. And the original owner was uh, a guy that worked at BVW on Pembina Highway. Green, Jim Greenham yeah. was the original owner of the bike, and, and Jim Gold was the second owner. He gave me this. So he gave me this list with all the stuff with it too. Actually, uh, I give Dave, where, Dave, you're here somewhere, I've seen you. Yeah, the fender, did it work for you? That fender came with it. He had it listed here, two fenders, one unpainted. A uh, bunch of parts with it. Um, he even had a jacket, the original BMW jacket, the little windbreaker jacket. He had the original cloth that sits on the end of the tools. He gave me all that stuff. And then he had a bunch of BMW tools and he had it listed here, optional box of workshop tools, and I bought them off him for a hundred bucks as well at the time. Anyway, so we bought the bike, Marie started riding it. The first year she rode it to, uh, we went to Calgary, to a rally in Calgary, and then we went to uh, Lillooet in BC again. No, we went that year, we went to Stanley Stomp in Idaho, up in the middle of the mountains, and she rode the bike there. And we got back, and uh, I figured, well, you know, needs a bit uh, more power. So we decided I was going to lower it. It was a bit top heavy for it. 
So we decided I was at a rally in Calgary and a guy let me take a sidecar and a gold wing for a ride. And I liked it. Thought, well, maybe we'll look into a sidecar. So we con con contacted Dauntless Motors. They were selling sidecars at the time. And uh, they put me in touch with the guy, Gary Bates, out in BC. So Gary brought the sidecar up to Mission BC. We trailered the bike out there. He made the whole subframe for it and put the sidecar on. So that's where the sidecar started. And Marie rode at the end, she rode it to work like that for a while. Then uh, I sent the, the triple threes out to another guy in BC and he authored the M so it would steer better. Um, Marie rode it to Calgary, I think, four or five times to, to rallies. Went to Nelson, BC to sidecar rally, Thunder Bay to sidecar rally. And then the two of us, uh, we rode it to Montreal camping and both of us in the bike and sidecar went to Montreal and stuff on it. And then we got back, wanted to get more power so we put, I put uh, R90 jugs and pistons on it and foolishly I put the uh, R65 heads back on it and it, too much compression it blew the gaskets. So then I got the R90 heads and that's where this comes in, that's the original one. I had to get new ones made so that I could fit the, the original carburetors to it. So we done that for a while rode it that way. Then um, I got a chance of, of course I made suspension upgrades to it, new shocks and springs in the front of the end, stuff like that. Um, then I got a chance of a wrecked motorcycle, an R90 slash 6 with a motor transmission, I wanted the 5 speed transmission. And uh, I talked to Chaz, contacted the guy, uh, Don Beveridge, who was outside Chicago. And uh, he was the Definitely a BMW, BMW tattoos on him and everything he talked about was BMW. Anyway, I bought the motor and transmission off him and then Chaz says, well why don't you check and see the rest of the bike? So we did, we ended up buying the bike in pieces. And most of it. Most of it. <laughs> Chaz and Tom, about, and Tom and I then made a road trip to Albert Lee, which was about halfway out of, out of uh, Chicago down on the highway. We met him there and picked up the bike and brought it back. So we put the R96 motor transmission into it. Um, in 2010 was the last long trip we made on it. We went to the, uh, a rally called Top of the Rockies in Colorado, at a place called Peonia. And we went there and Chaz and Tom rode with us. We were talking about it the night in the coffee shop. Tom was saying that's the best gas mileage he ever got because we were riding at 60 miles an hour all the time on back roads. So he was getting, what did you get to the gallon, Tom? 60? Yeah, nearly 60. Nearly 60 miles to the gallon riding along with us. We made a good trip. Went there. Uh, Chaz and Tom came home, and Marie and I went on, and we went to Mesa Verde, which is down in the southern, southwestern tip of, uh, of Colorado. And we went up there and visited mm -hmm. that. And then we come back, and I'd always wanted to go up uh, Pikes Peak. So we decided we are going to go up Pikes Peak. We got a hotel the night before, stayed in the hotel. Uh, Checkout wasn't until wasn't until noon, so we got up early the next morning, took all the camping gear and put it in our room, got on the bike, and we went up Pikes Peak. I don't know if any of you have ever been up there. It's over 14,000 feet to the top of it. So we went up there, the two of us, in the bike and sidecar. Lucky it was early in the morning, so it was cold, so she didn't run out of oxygen before we got to the top. But we made it up there. On the way home, we came over... Uh, the Beartooth Pass, um, so we've done quite a, quite a few mountain passes on that trip. Um, so now, mostly, now we cheat, we trailer when we go on long trips, we trailer behind our motorhome. Last uh, winter we took it to Texas, uh, we rode it around, parked the motorhome and rode it around on short trips. We put over a thousand miles on it in about a day. Right now the bike is uh, 106,000 miles on it. Awesome. So that's the story of our bike. Well done. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Best thing to have done would have been if I'd given him two days' notice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>